Hello there, Ray here. And guys, we just finished a seven hour live stream where we, where we did tons of testing in the newest snapshot. And all the tips and tricks that we learned, we were going to be sharing with you in this video. And remember guys, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out on future snapshot discoveries. Now, if you guys aren't sure what's all new in the snapshot, check out my snapshot review video, which covers the basics. And if there's something you guys would like me to test, tell me down in the comments. We start out by looking at the new respawn anchor block. Does so you guys made like an explosive trampoline down here. Sure. You just click yeah, it and it no, lowers the opening. So but if you're in survival, you die instantly. Uh, yeah. So all you need to do is put one charge into the new respawn anchor, and then it will be able to be blown up. So if I click on it right now, it's not going to blow up. If I put one charge into it, and then I right click it, it's going to blow up. Kind of similar to a bed. It blows downwards and kind of blows up a pretty big hole. So if you guys do this in survival, I got to blow up, put one charge in it, right click it. Yeah, it's going to kill you. It says, uh, killed by intentional game mechanic. There is the actual bug report. Looks like a pocket edition bug report at one time. Pretty funny. Same for like the, being killed by uh, a bed in another dimension. I think it gives you the same exact uh, bug report. So it's very explosive. Now we're here in the end dimension. Let's see if it works here. Put my charge in, right click it, yes. <laughs> Let's go ahead and try a bed. So the holes, hmm, very similar. I think probably explosion is same as like beds. So let's see if we can push it. I'm guessing it's kind of similar to a cauldron maybe. Nope, can't push it. So it's talent. Let's look at F3. Uh, over on the right hand side, it says respawn anchor charges zero. It has no fluids in it. I don't think you can water log it. Nope. You can't even like right click up against it. Can you shift? Oh yeah, you can shift up against it though. So yeah, if you try to place anything against it, you have to shift to actually place it. Interesting. Similar to like a container. I mean, it does have like um, solid sides. Can I put levers on top? I can, yep. So there's like a full cube. It's not like a college or anything like where you can fall into the centerpiece. It's solid in there. So we can go ahead and stick a comparator out the back of it. So now it reads nothing. So we charge it once. What signal strength does it produce? A signal strength of three with one charge. Okay. So there is three. Charge again. Now we're up to seven. Charge again. Eleven. Last one's fifteen. So yeah, you get full strength. So you can kind of detect when it is completely full. So you can do some cool stuff with that. So we got a dispenser pointing into it with glowstone. Nope. <laughs> Just shoots it out the top. So you have to right click it. It also makes that portal animation. It also changes the F3 as well. Uh, let's check the light level. See so if you're sitting on top of it, 15. Oh no, it's changing. It's all by itself in zero. Two, six. 10. So that level is 10 now. Now it's 14. If you go inside of it, it goes up by one more. So you have quite a variety of light levels you get from this. Pretty cool. I like to say, can't be moved. So, do we get any updates from this? Oh, we do. Yep. The observer can detect the changes. Very cool. So, if we go ahead and put some charges into it, and if you're in the nether and you right click it, it's going to set your spawn point here. So we can also detect when somebody like loses, essentially dies. So essentially you can detect when someone dies. So you can either detect it from a comparator changing or observer. Uh, let's put a piston there and we'll do slash kill. So as soon as I respawn, you notice right now it's full charge. Yep. Stuff happened. It made noises. Using the piston off lost a charge very cool uh, let's go over here and we'll kill ourselves kind of makes a really cool wishing noise but yeah you can detect like when somebody dies <laughs> so you could like prank somebody's like kind of similar to pranking somebody's bed but you can um, do a lot more with this in a bed it is exclusive to the end dimension or to the another dimension here can you get NBT data? Uh, data get block. Hmm. The block is not entity. I guess it's not a 
block entity. So it's it's more like a cauldron, but it can't be pushed. It might just be special properties because it's somewhat like obsidian. Since you do make it out of crying obsidian, do some redstone with it. Yeah, it'd be very useful to get different red, redstone strengths as well as uh, light strength out of it. So it's like obsidian. If you try to blow it up, there's ender crystal. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but it's not like obsidian where you can actually place ender crystals on top of it. Very, very blast resistant. I'd say it's pretty much like obsidian, ender chest, anything like that. Let's get ourselves a villager. No, it's solid. So it's not transparent. It means we should be able to send redstone signals through it as well. It's like so. Yep. And put redstone on top of it. Yep. So yeah, just like a normal block. It has special properties. Uh, it's not a tile entity, but it can't be pushed, so kind of interesting in that way. Okay. So yeah, just and then um, join the team. Uh, test death, or they someone must have removed it. So we gave uh, it I'll one charge. It. So that means technically only one person can use this to respawn. So if I yeah, right click so it, kill, I set my. Then if you kill two point. people at the exact same time, then it would um, prioritize the first one who clicked it usually. Okay. Occasionally so every, pretty much everybody can click on the same one in multiplayer. Everybody yeah, can yeah. use the same one to respawn. But once it runs out of charges, somebody's exactly. going to be left without a respawn point. Yeah, so um, create a team, then just kill everybody on the team so that you can test it. Because then it'll kill you guys at the same time. We need to turn instant. So now you're going to kill everybody who clicked on this at the same time. But only one person is going to be able to respawn. So we have four people now, so... I'm just gonna hit this button. So I'm still so, another. So, so two people, Cam. two people just came back, and everyone else ended up at world spawn point, I guess. Yeah, hmm. but I think me and Camp were the first two to hit it then. Yeah, so you could use this as kind of like a um, Nether hub for all your entire server. You could just keep filling it up. Everybody could right click it, use their spawn point. But you gotta remember every yeah. time you die to refill it so your teammates um, or yourself don't end up getting sent back to spawn. Very useful though. Currently it doesn't work with hoppers, but hopefully they add hopper. What about that? Uh, okay. Dispensers? Dispens oh, so, yeah, hoppers would be work. nice. We tried dispensers, they didn't work. So it makes sense. You can change your spawn point from either using anchor or using bed, but you can't use both. Yeah, like schedule like a special random tick. The anchor does. Yeah. I don't know, it's like I don't know what that's normally used for. So we got a fortune 3 pick and we're going to try it out on the new gold, nether gold ore. We got three. Oh wow, we got went from three all the way up to 21. Dang. So we got 18. So it looks like fortune does work. So you could potentially get more by forging it uh, than by actually smelting down. But it is kind of random, so you could kind of lose out as well. Plus, you have to craft it up to. Plus, you have to craft the nuggets afterwards into ingots. So it kind of depends what you want to do. Uh, this also means you can silk touch the. You can silk touch the ore to actually get the ore blocks, similar to, or similar to like coal. So normally, the gold ore in the overworld, you have to break it down the pickaxe before you can smelt it. This one's different. So if you want to get the actual block to smelt it down, you will need to use a silk touch pick. There it goes. And then you take that and put it into um, a furnace smelt down. So you got an option. If you don't have a silk touch, like early game, maybe like UHC or something, you could just mine up a bunch of this and get some gold. But I'm guessing if you do the math, probably um, silk touch and smelting might be better. So will piglins get mad if we mine gold near them? No, they don't seem to get mad. So they didn't care fortune or silk touch. They don't care. It's only gold blocks that they don't like you to uh, mine up. They didn't like it when I looked inside of the chest either. Okay, so we're gonna summon TNT by the new nether gold and it drops oh, yeah. nuggets. 
So yeah, you don't you don't get like a free silk touch or anything like that. So we got normal basalt over here. Let's summon some TNT. That's a hole it made. And we got some of the polish duration. Yeah, it looks very similar. So similar blast resistance, but you can also see what it looks like in large forms. Uh, definitely kind of tree-like. Very cool. So we test the area in which one bone mill will open up, will bone mill the nilium into some kind of um, vegetation. So it looks like it's a five by five area, much smaller than like the overworld and bone milling grass. We can still use this to make a farm to um, actually shift the floor and collect the items off of it. So that's what we're going to work on. So we switch out the floor with grass because um, it can pretty much can apply this to anything nearby that's um, sort of dirt-like. So we have a crimson variation here and a warped helium over here. And we have two dispensers, just bone mill them. They will produce a 5x5 each of them. And both of them has a chance of like producing like the red side obviously can produce the crimson root, uh, crimson root, crimson fungus. It also has a chance of producing the warped fungus. But the warped one can produce warped roots, warped um, spout, sprouts, as well as warped fungus. And it can also do crimson. So very rarely can you get uh, crimson roots from the warped anilium. So if you just have crimson if you just have warped uh, nilium in the farm, you can actually get every single type. And you can use the rest of uh, dirt. As long as you have two pieces there to do that. So these are the results. You can see you get a lot more warped, obviously, because it's uh, on warped nilium. But you get the sprouts, the roots, and the fungus and warp. You also get quite a few less fungus as well as roots in the crimson variation. That's pretty much all the blocks there is. That you normally can't farm uh, the twisted vine that you can get from uh, just farming it individually as well as the weeping vines so we went ahead and made it just as small as where they put in the vegetation uh, we also just switched to one dispenser and we put a little bit of delay that way the dispenser has time to turn off as well as turn back on again and now it works pretty nice we also have both vegetation blocks here so we got crimson as well as the warped so we can get equal amounts of both types now we just need to hook up a actual um, collection system click all the items so since when you bone mill it you can get a chance of getting pretty much every vegetation except for the weeping vines which you can get from growing up the big trees here you can see if i have it accidentally bone mill onto nether rack we get some weeping vines we get some of the twisting vines there if i bone mill here you can see that Pretty much it's going to try to apply red stuff around it. It's unable to actually put those weeping vines over here. But the blue side, or the warped side, is able to do those blue vines. But you also get a chance of getting the actual fungus. Meaning it is possible to just keep bone milling an area in hopes that you get a fungus and then bone mill that fungus into a tree. That way you don't need, like even have a player to actually plant in a sapling to grow a tree. Except this is for a fungus. So by having one dispenser bone mill the bottom, you have a chance of putting something interesting on this, including a fungus. Then if you have another dispenser which bone mills the top, you can turn that fungus into a huge fungus. No players even need it to be here. And bone mill can be supplied from a bone mill source like AFK fish mob farm or a compost setup with a farm. And the guys actually set up a nice little wiring up here that does that. So they got dispenser which bone mills this dispenser bone mills this bottom piece here, and then this dispenser bone mills this top. And if it doesn't grow a tree after a second bone mill, then they will push up and break any of the other foliage, and then they just keep retrying. As soon as a tree grows, then they can detect it, because there'll be a solid block here, which will connect these. And then you hook this up very similar to the other EFK fungus giant tree farms that we designed in the past. A couple of them here. And this TNT will come in and destroy it all, and collect all the items. Yeah, I think it's fine. Like, so you made, a, you made a, a data pack? I mean, this is exactly what the game checks as well. So It's a data pack that adds the predicate for checking if in open water, basically. is. Yeah, basically, well. it does the same thing as the loot table, but you can check it with a command instead of with the loot table. Yep. And if it's true, it'll produce... It makes the smoke. The smoke. Yep. So if the water is not, if it's not shallow, or if it's too shallow, then it's not going to produce it. 
Here the bottom's yep. up against the edge, so it's not producing smoke. So let's try out extra does AFK fishing farm. Uh, entity predicates. So it looks like there's no smoke on it. So that means it's not um it's not gonna give you the treasure gem in. So it's minus two in X, two plus two in X, minus two in Z, two plus two in Z, minus one in Y, two plus two in Y. So you need to have like water around all this? They need to be still water or air. Or air. Oh no, it needs to be filled with water. It doesn't need to be water. And so fluid sources. blocks work as well. So it needs to be sources? Sources, yeah. But locked blocks are okay as well. Uh. A 5x5 five five area mm -hmm. below the bobber, at the bobber's height, and two above that need to be either air blocks or how, how, how much below, water locked How much blocks. below the, the bobber needs to be? One block below the bobber, so probably two deep. Ah, I got that. So I got two deep, I got 5x5 five 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 water. By five. And if you throw it in the center, I think it should... <laughs> Mine's working. <laughs> <laughs> Iron yeah, bar or something? I guess. Looks like it's working. So we've been doing some testing with the data pack and it looks like it works if we got a five by five, two deep worth of water. I put this one offhand, it still works. If I place in one dirt like right here, it'll kill the smoke, indicating it no longer works. Uh, to make it rework, we have to pull the bobber out and then cast again. So now you can see it's smoking once again, which is our little indicator to show that it's working. So it seems that we cannot have waterlogged blocks here either. That kills it. Yeah, signs, they don't seem to be a problem. If I put a sign right underneath of it. Yeah, you can put a sign inside the water too, I guess. Placing a block above after I cast it does not seem to cause any problems. Oh, it also needs to be non collidable blocks. Oh, that's interesting. Um... Like... Waterlogged blocks that wouldn't have a collision. Collision shape. Oh, which I'm not sure if there are any. I guess fence well, we, gates, open fence gates. Well, we have our, our signs here. Our signs are not causing problems. Well, signs, yeah. So you can put like signs in there. They're waterlogged. We got coral, we got kelp, we got seagrass, small and tall, and it still works. Just can't place anything else of other blocks that collide or are not waterlogged. Could put air in there, but air doesn't stay because the water would flow into it. Any blocks above kills it. Entities really don't affect the actual um, bobber once it's in the water. But if you would place like string over here on top of the water, yeah, it kills it. So it looks like it needs about two air blocks above it. Yeah, it needs like you have the bobber position, then one block below it, and two blocks above it. If I place a block here, kills it. Yeah. I think once it kills it, it's not. It won't restart. From what I can tell. Yeah, it seems like we have to keep recasting it. I guess it didn't say up to scale limit. Yeah, so you just so need... you can still build it underground, you just... Oh yeah, you could build it underground. But you do get you do get a little edge um, if you have sky access. But it's not required. I guess you get more fish bites if you have sky access, as well as if it's raining. You can't you... really detect the bobber, right? You need an entity that can detect when the bobber goes down. Oh, that's really interesting. So but then it stops probably because it's no longer two blocks deep. Once the fish bit onto it, it actually pulled the bobber down uh, below the boat and got stuck on the boat. Go ahead and break the boat and see if it fixes itself. Yeah. So if redstone ore is currently off, and then when a fish will bite it, pull it down enough to activate the redstone ore. There it goes. So now the redstone ore is lit. So if I move it, place a new one. Next time I fish bites, it's going to activate again. There it goes. So yeah, that is definitely useful. So what we got is the redstone ore block down here. Underneath we have a budded piston. So as soon as the ore updates, it's going to remove this power. And that power goes all the way up to this piston, which is holding a note block. So what happened is... The player throws the fishing rod out, it's going to activate this. 
And then that's going to remove this block to over here. And that's going to put this note block in front of his face. So now you just right click against the note block. Uh, as soon as a fish is caught, it's going to pull down and that is going to remove the power from this, which is going to remove this note block from the player's face. So if I just cut that, it's going to pull that away, allowing you to reel in your catch and uh, yeah, essentially get a fish. And then we have a little bit of logic here just to reset everything. So when that does happen, we just push this block back over to the other side and it resets everything. It's very crude, but it does work, which is awesome. So right now it's good because you see the particles. So it's working good, but as soon as it pulls it down, it gets too close to the blocks underneath and it actually fails. So by the time you would reel it in, you would not get any of the treasure enchantment. So you need to have a little bit more water underneath, that way it never able to actually hit anything. So somewhere like this where it's a little bit deeper, we got particle effects. And as soon as it pulls it down, you can see the particle effects are still on it. And even though it comes back up, it still has particle effects. So we need a little bit more water in order to make sure that by the time you pull it in, it's actually a treasure enchantment. So with deeper water, it's really hard to actually detect the bobber. So we could go back to our old school AFK fish farms. Uh, back in the day, me and my brother kind of designed this farm where you could AFK fish. And back then it was pretty useless AFK fish because there wasn't any reward besides getting fish. But on a server, there was actually statistics and there was a fishing statistics. We wanted to get it up. So we designed a really simple farm where the player would just hold down right click. And yeah, essentially what would happen is there was a chance for the fish to actually bite the bobber even when you spam clicked like this. And over time you'd catch quite a bit of fish. I believe back then there was even durability so you didn't even lose durability or it was just because if you don't hit a block or catch a fish you don't actually take any durability. So you can keep doing this as much as you want. We can actually expand upon that just by putting in a timer. So by having a timer that just lets us pull in the rod for a period of time which is most likely if you're pulling the rod uh, you can just have your player right clicking on the snow block and then you can aim up. You want to have the fishing rod thrown up against something so it lines into your water pool and then every so often it's just going to release this so that you end up reeling it in so as soon as the timer goes up it's going to pull away and then you release it and then you can uh, cast out again so by doing that you can at least get treasure enchantments even without detecting if there is a fish nibbling or not so it's still possible to do afk normal fishing you just won't get treasure enchantments if you want to get treasure enchantments you can do a setup like this and you have a slow AFK fish farm, but at least you get some treasure enchantments while you're doing AFK. It was a lot of fun messing around with the new content that came out in this latest snapshot. I will be covering each of these farms in individual video, kind of going into more detail, providing the world downloads and a much cleaner setup here as this is just a testing world. You can see there's a lot of chaotic stuff going on. And guys, make sure to follow me on my other social media so you guys will get notified at when the streams go live. And you can also join the server as we mess around with the coolest stuff. And as always, the best way to support my channel is just share what I do with other Minecrafters. I would like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!